Greetings and salutations, accounting technology watchers, and welcome to another Accounting Bytes. It's been a really busy week in the accounting tech world, so let's go straight into it. We have a new cloud tax product, Bright Tax, uh, courtesy of the folks at Bright Group who continue their intriguing project of assembling different products from around the accounting technology universe. So Bright Pay, Relate, BTC Software, Accountancy Manager, Surf Accounts, and then sort of bringing them in, integrating them, and, and eventually I, the plan seems to be sort of bringing them under one banner, as it were. So yes, one to, one to devote a bit of time to once things become slightly less busy over the summer, perhaps. But uh, yes, right tax, uh, building on the base of BTC Software's cloud uh, project um, that was released earlier this year. Uh, Rob Ellis, their, their product director for tax and compliance, talked me through uh, some of the efficiencies that this new cloud tax tool could bring. And um, Kevin McCallum from Bright Group, the CEO of Bright Group, filled in uh, some of the integration details coming. They also announced that they will be launching proposal and company secretarial product later this year. So plenty going on there. Uh, the podcast, I, I mentioned that with the curtain coming down on spring software season, all the conferences and shows have, have wound up for the spring and uh, joining me on the podcast were two accounting tech experts, John Toon and Billy McLaughlin, uh, to talk through some of the themes running through the conference season, uh, as I said here, undoubtedly being uh, the biggest being the explosion in AI tools, but... Uh, a few others as well. Um, links to um, all of the stories featured in this video will be in the description. And if you'd like to listen to the podcast, you can search on your podcast player of choice for Accounting Web. If you're watching this on social, please like, follow, subscribe, any of those things, really. Um, so thanks to John and Billy for their expertise there. Um, Really interesting announcement here from Australian Cloud Document Management and Automation at FYI. So they have integrated with both Iris and CCH, um, which gives users uh, users of Iris and CCH, quite often being sort of larger firms um, with more complica complicated clients, um, giving them the completeness of desktop compliance with the flexibility of cloud document storage. And, and we're seeing this a fair bit, and I talk about this at the end of the podcast, of, of having these core desktop tax and accounts products and then having the, the ability to collaborate um, sort, of, sort of as complementary services around the edges. So yeah, interesting, interesting times there. A uh, new product here from Dext, so you can now create, uh, amend or approve expenses via their mobile app. Uh, let me put a little video here. Oh, should have turned off the uh, volume for that. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but um, yeah, a little, a little demo uh, here. And if you're interested in more details, it's on the Dext website. What's next? Uh, tying a lot of a lot of the products I've been talking about just then in, uh, we have one of John's uh, occasional series of tech stacks, which I really enjoy. Uh, joining him for this one was Emma Reed from Cotton's Group to talk through their app lineup. As you can see from the graphic, it's a decent sized firm with a, a fair number of clients. Um, they're using. Zero is their their sort of accounts platform, their engine with CCH um, compliance tools. Uh, some interesting client facing apps there: Chaser, Stripe, Go Cardless, Modular, and Dext. But of course, backing it all up is Excel and Power BI. Our farewell fat return filing portal. We hardly knew you, so with with MTD for that now compulsory. For all taxpayers, um, HMRC has
uh, slam that portal door shut. Uh, that's from the folks at that calc there. Uh, Richard Ashcliffe joined me recently to talk EU e-invoicing. Um, I'll put a link to that webcast in the descriptions of this video. Uh, what's next? So financial platform Tide have called for an anti-fraud tax to fight the scammers. So yeah, we've had an epidemic of financial crime in recent years. So uh, it says here, UK Finance uh, said in the first half of 2022, criminals stole £610 million through scams. So Tide are calling for an anti-fraud tax on the value chain. So that would apply to social media and telecoms companies where the majority of these scams originate. Uh, yeah, perhaps one to file under a great idea, but it may not happen, but uh, you know, appreciate the sentiment. Um, on to perhaps, I mean, one of the greatest miscarriages of justice in our generation, um, the, the post office and their faulty accounting system that ended up in, I think, up to about 700 postmasters being wrongly uh, convicted and jailed in a lot of cases. Uh, there's a public inquiry going on at the moment, uh, which makes for pretty grim viewing, but kind of essential. And the latest out of this is that the post office boss in charge of criminal prosecutions blocked a full investigation um, back in 2010 because he was worried that uh, it would be disclosable in trials uh, shortly after this this email um, that they're referencing emerged um, a postmaster who was eight weeks pregnant with a second child was jailed um, that remains ongoing um, what also remains ongoing is Fujitsu the company responsible for this accounting software continuing to receive government contracts to this day intriguing development across the pond now uh, Charlie, which is a digital bank for those over 62. Google tells me that uh, from the age of 62, uh, American citizens uh, can start um, uh, withdrawing their Social Security retirement benefits. So if you were wondering about that age, but uh, yeah, as you see, the marketing there is is very sort of retro. Um, there's an opportunity to get in advance. I think a lot of a lot of digital banks do these advances now phone support which is interesting um and it is yeah not let's have a look at this is it a bank it's not a bank but it is uh partnered with a bank um uh, i don't know how the americans like their checks so yes you can write checks um that's a, a, interesting perhaps one to think about for accounting firms and and software vendors how how you cater for older users. Um, something I've seen a, a couple of versions on, uh, staying on the personal finance beat here, ChatGPT for personal finance. So this one is Parthian, Parthian AI. Um, this is by integrating AI tools with your personal finance information. Bit of a red flag there for me, but I guess it depends on your personal level of information security uh, let's have a look at the video so you're typing in how expensive a home can I afford and it sort of chugs away for a bit here and here it goes 312,337 so there you go and you can dig deeper into that um, I'll just say link um, in the description Staying on the AI beat, uh, Diginomica, a you know, publication, um, has uh, drawn a line in the sand um, on AI content creation and saying that they will not be using generative AI for their journalism. Uh, Chris Middleton's been doing a lot of work on this, uh, sort of encouraging people you know, to be human is to be opinionated. Um, so, yeah, as I say, just just getting some of that expertise out there and I think that applies to, to if, if you're writing copy for your website as well just because sorry to go full Jurassic Park here but just because you can doesn't mean you should um, so well done to Dynamica there and I can only echo uh, the folks at Accounting Mag uh, won't be using generative AI 
for their content. Uh, let's dial the nerd factor up a little bit now and talk about file directories. Uh, this is an excellent article on The Verge here where an astrophysics lecturer teaching an engineering course had laid out an assignment where her students had to work on certain files for their project, but they kind of looked at her blankly to say, what are you talking about? And the students uh, didn't know how to use file directories. I think for those of us who've grown up with physical um, filing cabinets where things were located and seeing that transfer across to computers um, uh, and, and sort of filing emails and things like that, we'll probably find this amusing. But I guess in an age of cloud email and social media where everything has a built-in search function, why would you need to file anything? So, yeah, interesting direction of travel there. Um, I'm aware we're running over, so let's wind this up with an and finally for the ages here. And we've all done it. Um, angry email from a customer or a client or a reader, and you want to sound off about it, uh, so you dash off an email to your colleague. Well, in the case of... Uh, Former Revolut UK head, unfortunately, he accidentally dashed off an email to the customer instead, saying he'd be waiting in the garden with a shotgun. Awkward. Um, anyway, what I can promise you is that if you sign up for my accounting technology email every Thursday, you'll have no cause for complaint, and I definitely will not be waiting for you at the end of your garden. Um, yeah, if, if you're watching on the socials, um, please like, follow, subscribe. It genuinely helps to get the message out there and convince my paymasters that it's worth making these videos. Um, so thank you for your support and I will see you next week. Goodbye.